Alrighty, good morning everyone. It's the day of the M3. M3 is gonna get a little attention here today. So, got the camera set up. Saturday morning out here by myself. Be in here a little tightly. I test out some new products. Test out my new chair. Get the M3 some much needed love. Okay, I do like the tool tray being able to set stuff on it. <coughs> you know, I ragged on a little bit when I first put it on because I was worried about it contacting my Achilles, but we'll see. So that's brake buster straight up. Get my wash stuff ready to go. So, I feel like it's been a while since we sold the house and now I'm stuck with uh, slumming it with you normies out here. I've got a race, I was in here racing to get here because I slept in. I think it's like 8.30 now. It's a race to get to the garage to beat the sun so that I don't have to wash out in the sun. But uh, the old M3, man, I'm... It's funny, I was ready to sell it a few months ago and now I feel like I figured out my life in that uh, I bought an E39, uh, sorry, not E39, E36 M3. I was watching the EAG uh, video, first look video, and they had an E39 M5, that's why I got E39 on the brain. No, I don't intend to get an E39, at least not at this point, but I feel like I've re-caught the love for my classic M cars. And I didn't buy the E36. I didn't buy that to do a giveaway. I bought it to keep it. One of the things I've learned is never say forever, <laughs> right? So uh, the other thing we're gonna do today, which I also said I would never do, I <clears throat> said I didn't want any stinky old cars. I said, uh, but I did, to clarify, I did say I don't want any stinky old Japanese cars. Well, I guess I did buy a Civic. But um, I just don't like GTRs and stuff. It's just not my, not my thing. Oh, man, I got a little chip on my Brembo there. Shoot. Where's the valve stem? So uh, I bought a Acra, Akrapovich, um, <clears throat> Evolution exhaust for this. I like the Dynan. Um, I just want to try something more, something different, something a little, uh, something I've never actually done on this car. I just usually not a fan of the, the Acra exhaust because they tend to be pretty stock-like. Uh, on this, it's a little bit, it's quite a bit more aggressive. So I'm having, uh, you know, dining, I'm waiting, I've been waiting on the new dining rear section, but um, they just haven't, you know, everything's backed up all over the darn world today with too, too much money chasing too few goods. You know what that is, it's a textbook textbook uh, definition of what uh, inflation is so look out but you know inflation is probably our only chance to dig out of the deficits that have been created but that's a whole nother conversation anyway the um where was i going with that yeah, the the diamond exhaust i'm you know, kind of been waiting to get a new one because mine's uh, starting to it's it, mine this was the uh, exhaust that was on the car and it wasn't very well taken care of the previous owner so i um i bought the acra and there was only there were only a couple left in the in the country a couple left because they they discontinued production of it so i got one i have it i'm going to put that on today theoretically 
Then I'll hit up Alex at Alpine and get a uh, an update to the tune. I think I know ESS has an Acre specific tune for this car, but I think Alpine might too. I don't see this tool tray is big enough that I can set my gun here very easily. I'm going to work with them to build us a holster. That's my goal. To build us a gun, gun wandish, or probably just a gun holster where we can just holster it in place. We're going to figure that out. We're going to shrink down the base a little bit, I think. I, I like this. I think it's fine. You can see the stool. It looks more awkward on camera than it is. It actually works pretty well. Look at the GT3 is chilling back there. Needs a wash, you know, the, right now is major pollen season. I'm sure I'll be shooting some snot rockets here in a minute. Dang it, I'm gonna scratch up my tool. Park too close to the curb. So, let's see here. So yeah, M3, we're gonna do an exhaust. The, um, you know what really did it for me here recently is the, um, you know, the launch of the G80. You know, get me, get me excited about, you know, the new, you know, new M3s. You know, the, the idea of getting a new M3, it's just so, I don't know. To me, it's what life is about. And one of the one of the great joys in life is I don't know BMW M cars, and I hate the new one. Um, by the way, I'm going to be detailing a G80 this week. Mainly, you know, I don't do detail other people's cars, but the main reason I'm doing it is I want to get hands on it, spend some some real quality time with it, <coughs> figure out what it's about. And then instead of having an opinion about it, I'll have an experience with it and can hate on it then if I want. But having that has kind of invigorated my chase and desire for another M car. The Civic's about to leave, so um, and I'm getting the yarn building, so I'm going to have some more space. So it's making me... Uh, It's made me have a desire for an M car, and uh, Michael Waba works for me, who's like the uh, the E36, E46 Whisperer. So he's got you know, a bug in my ear, and so I uh, was on a search for an E46 and or an E36 M3 because I want to have the triumvirate. I don't want an E30. I don't. I don't like E30s are a little before my time. I have no reference. To the E30, and the E30 is just a little too too old for my taste. The E36 is too old for my taste, but um, for me, the E36 is more about the restoration and the pursuit of making it OG spec, if you will, whatever that is. And so I um, I bought yesterday. I bought a Techno Violet on. I think it's Techno M Cross Interior, I think it's called. So it's the Alcantara and um, cloth interior. The car has 37,000 miles. The guy who bought it bought it five years ago. He bought it for 18 grand five years ago. Drove it 200, a little bit more than 200 miles in the last five years. So it just, I think it just rolled over 37,000 miles. It was the car uh, in Jacksonville that was listed for what fifty five on like a you know like a truck site or something like that a motorcycle site and uh, uh, you know Mike Waba knew knew about it that car so he called the guy he was Mike was thinking about buying that that car back you know several years ago and um, so I offered you know I offered forty five so I bought it for forty five grand I think that's a fair price for what these things are worth and the rarity of that car but it's going to require you'll see which will make it more fun for the videos but it's going to require some work 
I've got some work to do on it. Um, but that's part of the fun. Oh, check it. New labels. I just put this on. I don't know if it's going to stick. Because there was, I didn't clean the bottle beforehand. You should put it on a new bottle or at least clean it. <sighs> Dang it, I messed this up. I rushed to put it on because I'm racing the sun and I screwed up my label. The labels are pretty, I wouldn't say they're easy, but they're not hard to put on. But uh, Bryce killed it with these things. Just gotta get that air bubble out, dang it. I didn't have any air bubbles last night. I put 16 of them on and then I rushed it this morning on this one, messed it up. I've got an air bubble right there. I'm gonna work it out. But the bottle had some wheel cleaner on it and I didn't clean it beforehand. I'm like, ah, oh, let's see how it sticks. Come on, little buddy, get out of here. There goes the bulk of it. So anyway, look at that, V3, V1.3 sprayer, 750 milliliter bottle. I still like the industrial sprayers better, but the household bottle sprayer combo looks better at the moment. So until we get labels and stuff, I'm gonna be using the household sprayers. And we're gonna to bring tons of them in. Let's keep on moving. I'll go around this way. <clears throat> Totally the right size, the right demeanor, the right everything. So we have, right now we don't have bottles available to put the labels on, but we have a bunch of labels in blue. So black will be coming in the future. Got to keep testing it out here. I think you want to make sure you wipe your bottle down with alcohol to get a good adhesion with the label. But, you know, it's going to, I think, change the game a bit, having an awesome sprayer. And we're going to continue to develop the sprayers. But I'm super excited about having that. Oh shoot, I forgot to clean the wheel first. So, my, I feel like I've just taken a major step in figuring out life. I know I've said and I'm still not certain about this, but I've said a lot of, um, you know, I don't want to have tons of cars because I don't feel like I can maintain that many cars. We're still going to find that out because all of my cars are dirty right now <laughs> and that drives me nuts. But I, uh, I feel like... Um, I want to have, you know, the 3M cars and I want to have the three GT3 cars, right? So I want to have the best of each generation. And so I want to have eventually, so very likely this Techno Violet, I'm going to build it, get it set up really nicely. I'm going to keep my eye out for like a 98 or 99 Estoril Blue you know, super low mile, very expensive version of an E36. And then, you know, I would, I, I would possibly consider keeping a driver's car and then have a collector car. All right, so I know I'm totally flipping it on you of what my thought process is, but imagine having a, like for instance, this I would call a driver's car. This car is, um, it's been molested, you know, it's been in a, 
It's had the front and rear repainted. The trunk's been repainted. The front clip has been repainted. The rear bumper's been repainted. And so, and this car has 35,000 miles on it. It's really well sorted. It looks great. It handles well. It, it's basically perfect. But it, you know, it has a checkered past, if you will. So, the Techno Violet has no deal with it. It has no accidents. I don't think it's had any repaint. Well, but I will probably need to do some repainting and some touch up to it. Uh, but eventually, maybe the Techno Violet becomes my driver's car. Again, this all hinges upon me becoming uh, rich and famous and being able to afford all these all these uh, crazy cockamamie schemes that I come up with. But again, never say never. Why not? Who's going to stop me? I just got to work for it. Did I do the lugs? I don't think I did. But anyway, have the Technovile be the driver's car and then find a collector. But I still drive, but not as, not as much. And then do the same thing with this. Maybe get a Lime Rock. You know, a 2013 Lime Rock or something like that with like 2,000 miles on it and have that be my, my, so this be the driver and that be the collector. And then, same thing on the E46. Find something really special and then hang on to them and then it'll be worth a freaking crap pile of money someday. and take really great care of them and get to showcase them in the videos and lend them out when a, you know, a press car is needed and you know, for you know, friends of mine, things like that. But hoard, hoard a nice collection of the three main M cars. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm guessing you guys will like that idea. And then show them in the channel and drive them around and take care of them and maintain them and kind of build a little collection that I thought I would never want. Well, this week I've changed my mind. Anyway. I like to consider, and I know I, you know, some of you get all bent out of shape about this kind of stuff, but I like to consider possibility. And part of what I enjoy is the chase, you know, the chase and the possibility of things and the experimentation of what I, you know, what I love and don't love, and the, that pursuit, which is largely never ending. I don't think that I, yeah, I don't think I easy detailed that. Talking too much. What else is new? So then do the same thing with, you know, I don't want a 996 GT3, at least I don't think I do. Um, I don't think I want the base GT3s. I think I want RSs. And so I think I want, I would love to have a 997 RS 97.2. Everybody keeps sending me dot ones. I don't want a dot one. I want a dot two. So get a driver's version of a dot two, you know, a low mile, but one that uh, isn't, you know, a collector. And then eventually, you know, my goal when I hit 25 million in revenue. In a year. I want to buy a RS 4.0, 997. And all of this, a lot of this stems back to the G80, the fact that I have no desire for the new cars because they suck, you know, they're just, there's no character, there's no soul, it's too big. 
just don't, you know, I, I want to want it. You know, I want it, but it, it, it's like I know it, I'm not gonna like it. So the thing that Tesla's, Tesla's taught me is that if we're gonna have a digital car, you might as well go full digital, not half digital. At least that's my take on it. Notice how I don't, I try not to say opinion. It's either an experience or a take, you know, the word opinion just has a, to me, has a strong connotation of entitlement. I'm not entitled to my opinion. Not in your life anyway. But keep your mouth shut. I don't want your opinion. I am very interested in your experience with something. Okay, you bought a G80, you did this and that, and you love it, here's why. You know, not, you're an idiot, the new cars are so good, but you never even had one. And you're never getting one. Because you're so hung up on, you know, don't get so hung up on opinion. Opinion is so focused on everyone else's life instead of your own. That, to me, seems like a recipe for failure. So, don't give me your opinions. Give me your experiences with things. Otherwise, keep your mouth shut. Nobody wants to hear that. The only people who want to hear that are the other people that share the same useless opinion. And then you all just start validating. Everybody starts validating each other. So, E36 M3, E46 M3, E92 M3, 997.2 GT3 RS, 997.2 GT3 RS 4.0, 991.1 or 991.2 GT3 RS. So theoretically, I'm going to keep that car. Then 992 GT3, assuming I love that generation. That's the, that's the plan. That's the collection. And then, you know, GT, GT4 is really my driver's car. I freaking love that GT4 so much. I'm telling you, I, I like getting in that GT4 and driving it. You know, I love and, you know, admire my GT3 RS. But as a practical, can't wait to grab the keys, go jump in and go for a rip. The GT4 is the car, man, I'm telling you. It's freaking great. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it. What am I looking for? This. So, see the sun is chasing me here. We got the hard part done. I'll switch to DI water. So the house is coming along. I um, have quite a, taken on quite the project. We moved the water heater out. I moved the air handler out. Uh, electrician's coming next week to do a lot of pre-wiring for all the things I'm doing. Um, I need to make a diagram today or tomorrow for them to show you know all the all the things I need I think I have a pretty good idea where I'm gonna put things um, what else we figured out the Cree lighting so I'm gonna order the lighting uh, I'm now uh, a if you didn't watch the podcast I'm now a Dyne audio dealer I'm the sixth approved and authorized online slash well I mean you can always come here in person and get it dealer for Dyne audio which for those of you who know me or have known my love of Dyne Audio for decades, I never was able to sell it when I was selling home theater, but I just love Silk Dome. 
I have Dynaudio speakers in my in my um, Civic. You know, this this motivates me to go and do some Dyn stuff in in this car. And so back to my driver's car idea. The driver's car gets stereos and the other cars stay stock. You know, they don't mess with them. <coughs> Gosh, this pollen is killing me. So I need to continue to stick with the formula of chase what it is I'm motivated to chase at the moment. It's what I've done since the beginning with this business that I've now sort of accidentally created through massive effort and lots of risk taking. Let's get set up here. Rinse. Gosh, the car's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Here, what was I talking about? Oh, Dyn Audio, man! I'm I can't tell you how excited I am about this. To chase audio and build audio solutions for the garage, and the proxy by proxy, I'll be able to sell you and build your home theaters and two-channel systems and stuff like that if you want. But the main goal is for our design business to be able to offer solutions, high-end solutions. I'm gonna also reach out and see if I can convince SVS to let me become a dealer and uh, create a sort of be a basic, advanced, and ultimate solution system or subset of solutions for the garage and everything in between. So like the, the, the lighting, and the, so lighting, I'll have solutions for your house as well. The audio, I'll have solutions for your house as well. It all, it all applies, it all connects. But that won't be the focus. The focus will be on design, garage, if you're designing people's garages, having a full subset. So I wanna have you know, LG OLED, Sony LCD um, available. Um, so that we can, in the, these designs, I mean, we're selling the stuff anyway. You know, people are buying it through, you know, Amazon or other places, Best Buy. So why don't I just offer it myself? Plus the margins in audio are really great. So it helps, that profitability will help with product development and things like that. In the future, so I'm I'm fired up. So I'm going to pursue Yamaha. I think audio control, audio control, believe it or not, makes some amazing uh, preamps and amplifiers. Um, SVS JL Audio for subwoofers, and then my friend Sean out in the San Francisco has suggested strongly that I consider offering Sonance as well. Gotta honor the source on that one. I've never dealt with Sonance, never had anything Sonance, but they make some pretty awesome distributed audio solutions. Because a lot of these big projects, these big garages that we're doing, some of them are warehouses and storage facilities and things like that. You know, we need distributed audio solutions. All right, let's set up our foam cannon. Get rolling, let me just turn the camera this way. Should do the job. <clears throat> that way you can see the pressure washing set up here. So I should have my house set up with audio and stuff here shortly, but my house project is coming along. So you're getting old school Maddie video from 20 feet away because I'm here by myself. Got that. Have I mentioned GSF being so awesome yet? <laughs> So good. So good, people. I don't want to talk to you, whoever that is.
get out of here. All right, so we're gonna do 150 milliliters. Whatever soap you're using, just stop. Go to obsessgarage.com. Oh man, so good. And buy GSF. Ah, <coughs> shoot. Choking on pollen. And then I put mainly just because of the amount of time it takes to foam the car. I put about another 600 milliliters of water in here and we'll shake it up. So yeah, imagine that we have a, you know, it's just not super simple you know, audio solutions for the garage and, and I'm going to help people set it up and say, here's, I think it's going to do really well. I think people are going to want, and if you don't, worst case scenario, I sell a few here and there, but I think people are going to want that. You'll see. Now, a lot of you are going to cry and complain that, you know, a, a decent set of Dynaudio bookshelves is like five grand. Um, so that'll be on the high end and then we'll have stuff in the middle and low end as well. So just, just bear with me. Just chill. Don't get all bent out of shape. Let's foam it up. But that's in the subset of solutions that I'm working on. Ooh, new entry level pressure washer should be here in two weeks. So stay tuned for that. Oh, I need to shake this up. I normally put my cap on. If you don't shake it up, then you'll suck up all the concentrate of the soap. And then in two seconds, you'll run out of foam. Smells like delicious cherries. I'm readopting the model of, um, it's so much more enjoyable to work on your car when it's clean. So that's why I'm washing it before I do the exhaust. Having to learn how to manage a, uh, a hose again. <coughs> this is why having a swiveling gun is so important. Otherwise your hose becomes a real annoyance. See that? Now I have, I don't know, maybe a little bit of extra soap. But I'll dump this in my bucket. But 650, mixing up a 750 milliliter solution works quite well. <coughs> Dang it, man. Okay. If you're building your house, you're specking anything, you want to spec for a P114. This is a prior hose bib. It's amazing. Don't cheap out on some hot you know, water heater hose. Just buy the freaking real thing. This thing. I know it's like 300 bucks for the set, but. Things that you use often, if you have, you know, three cars, two cars, you can, uh, you know, use this quite often. GSF. I 
love it. It took me many years to find a soap that I'm this excited about. <coughs> you know, Adams is still good too. And so the setup in my garage is going to be very similar to this setup that I have here. The only problem I have here is getting out of this, this, this lip here. I lose half the bucket. Let's try this angle. Ah, smash my freaking finger. Dang it. Let's see. Still, my all time favorite car to wash. This is the time of year. You guys up north are coming into it in a few months. This is the time of year to, if ever, just drag the the pad across the surface with that you know, pollen is actually extremely abrasive. It'll scratch the crap out of your paint if you're not careful. So we get the yarn building. I signed the lease for the yarn building, which is a building right behind here. If you're not a member of Inside the Hex, go become one. You'll get a first look. I did a quick little walkthrough of it. Um, I need to go up to the other building see what the status is of that, what it looks like, but get get that on camera. But the intent, so my, my thought process is this. So we can all agree that the vast majority of the reason that Obsessed Garage has become a successful online retail entity is because of this channel me sharing with you my neuroses and processes and then many of you just saying you know I really appreciate that and honoring the source and so that is and always will be the bread and butter of the organization but I've said many many times and as my focus has not shifted, but continue to, to evolve. You know, the cars will always be a cornerstone. Detailing will always be a cornerstone. The garage products, like tools and cabinets, flooring, lighting, will always be another component, another cornerstone. You know, audio is, is, has always been something, so audio video will be another cornerstone of the garage for me. And because they're cornerstones of the garage, they become a cornerstone of the business. But the vision has always been that I would create an end-to-end -end solution to be able to provide a whole solution. Dang it, try not to get my feet soaking wet for the garage. I'm not exactly sure when the audio went out, but Whatever. I got a new, uh, the, I was saying that the new short tube will be available for pre-order here shortly, uh, probably in about two weeks. And they'll be delivering, they'll be delivering in about three and a half months. They're going to be 60 bucks and it'll be a two short tube for all three egos. Anybody else paranoid? I'm always paranoid about leaving the car, the key in the car. I don't know why, I just am. Like it gets locked inside or something. Let's dry this thing off completely now. See, I'm so excited to get rid of all these non-matching bottles. These ego blowers are so good. This thing just keeps on going. So, 
Still had like 25% battery life left. All right, I'm gonna put this on the lift. Make it more comfy to drive up on. Or uh, to dry on, dry on, to dry the car. Blech. Let's see, how does my thing look? I have these new book, book ramps that I'm, they don't, I don't need it for this, but I'm just kind of testing them out on this setup here. We don't need these either. <clears throat> Can't wait to have a recessed scissor lift at my house. It's gonna be great. Mike and I are gonna cut that ourselves. Buckets. Listen to that air compressor, how quiet that thing is. It's kicking on because I have a little leak. I gotta address. Gotta clean up my mess. Let's get my buckets. GSF, get some. Freaking awesome. I wouldn't lie to you. Well, I would lie to you if, you had, lie to you if I had to but I don't have to, because it's so good. See, I knew he wasn't telling the truth. <sighs> Civic's gonna be rolling out of here in a couple of weeks. Oh, here's my new method, check this out. This is smart. I stand up on the curb, working my balance. That way it doesn't blow back on my shoes. You ever do that where you dump the bucket and it comes back and rolls up over your toes? Or, oh shoot, I can just stand behind it, even better. How did this stuff get all over here? And then my stool, I just take, raise it back up for a more practical position and I'm cleaning other stuff. Let's put everything away. This is gonna be an old school Maddie long form video, even showing you cleaning up stuff. My kind of video. If I don't have at least 10% of the people saying it's too long, I didn't do a good job. And I'm just gonna have to come out. Somebody's gonna get that. Brake buster. Tire dressing. This doesn't belong in there. My funnel, my funnel prototypes go right there. Let's kick off our machine. Off, 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 switch off, actually switch on so we can run it out. Let's do that with the gun, holster. on Jeff's desk. One of these guys will want this. Then, pull my hose in. Set the end of the hose here. It runs out. Take my multi-purpose towel. I'm going to use this to clean the hose as I wind it back up on my Cox reel. It 
It's not quite normy washing. I'm not quite slumming it. I'm about to put the uh, doors up and hang out in the air conditioning. All my fancy equipment, but it's certainly not as fancy as a dedicated wash bay. And then take our peepee -pee dribble plug back on. Tighten up our drag and we're clean. Put our wash and rinse buckets back. I don't put the lids on completely. I can't on this one because I got a hole in it. I don't put the lids on completely because I don't want it to get all moldy in there. And we're clean. Let's get the doors closed. Air conditioning's already kicking. And we're gonna snob dry it. So I lost the uh, dedicated wash bay, but picked up a dedicated lift for drying. Let's get our ND filter off. All right, let's put the car up in the air. So I use these pucks. Use these guys. So this is a uh, Delrin. So it's a plastic CNC plastic uh, puck for the scissor lift. And um, it takes a little, you know, getting the right spot, but they're not really designed for the BMW because the BMW has a square hole. These are for the Porsche, but I kid it, put it in and kind of twist it so it sits up in there. The M3 has the best jack points. BMWs have the best jack points of any cars. I think. Just where they're positioned. I don't need to put any extensions out on the ramp. I'm gonna have to push the car back a little bit because I got it in the wrong spot, but. Just take these little guys and twist them up in there. Hope they don't drop out. This is a Nussbaum Jumbo 7. I don't even really need to put it up that high, but I just want to put it up so I can clean up the wheels. I want to put some bead maker on the wheels. Let's just go wide angle, Matty mode. You can see everything. Good to go. I'm not sure where my mic cut out before, so let's get some towels. This should be all I need to do the whole thing, three towels. I wonder if I should chop this video up or just make one big long one. Like M3 and me day. So I got my bead maker. Let's bring the car back down a bit. Man, I just wanted to get it on the lift. Because of the DI, I could just skip this step altogether. But I haven't given much love to any of the cars here recently, so I think it makes sense to rub on it a little bit. So 
So I love using that big heavy towel now and then follow with the smaller lighter towel doing any extra that's necessary. Oh man, so yeah, I've been working all these years to continue to improve the the laziness of the process, if you will. There's nothing lazy about washing cars and detailing them, but let's say improve the enjoyment factor of a rather arduous process and never ending process of maintaining and attempting to keep your car maintained. It's not a simple task. I get excited about how much I don't haven't learned yet or don't know or what I haven't discovered, what you guys have in your head that I haven't listened to you yet or heard from you yet on certain processes, process improvements and product improvements and I'm telling you, just wait till you see what I got planned coming up here with design and product development, bottling, custom hoses. I like to think, you know, I, I, in all these washing talks, I kind of spill my guts and share things way ahead of schedule. And it always takes longer than I think. But my guess is if you went back and listened to some of my old stuff, old, old uh, predictions, old videos, I, I'd say I probably accomplished almost all. Or, you know, not so much accomplished, but, you know, created the products or the systems or most of the things that I've promised myself that I would do. Yeah, I don't know about, I don't know if I love the, the adhesive. See, if you make the adhesive too strong on the bottles, on the labels, then it becomes too hard to install it. But if it's not, if it's not stout enough, then they fall off. So we might have a little bit more development to do on these. But if it were me and I was putting together a set of bottles, I'd buy two sets of labels, which is the way I would do it. And that way when I screw up one of them, I can fix it. That's the way I do things, and I'm sure many of you do the same. Man, this car is beautiful. It took me a while with the battle of water spots and melting bumpers and screwing stuff up. But man, this thing looks good. It's not just on camera, in person too. Make sure I'm recording, make sure you can hear me. Make sure you can see me sweating. Assuming that these version 1.3, assuming they hold up, I th we're, we've got a really great sprayer. We need more time to see if there's more that needs to be done. The other thing I did is I did a uh, swap. I swapped out the uh, the heads on the ones I put together at home and put um, put the industrial heads on them. These are the household heads. So we'll see how that does as well. Let's do the 
the hood. Now flip a roo. I can't believe I was thinking about selling it a few months ago. See, I'm going to be working on the Dyn Audio line, and I'm most excited about making videos on all that stuff. You guys are going to get sick of it, but I don't care. I'm excited to make. It's like going back to my roots of learning all, all the details about all the features and how the drivers are made and. Someday, when, I, when my life slows down, I'd love to make a multi-month long European tour and visit all of these places that make all this great stuff that, that I'm so interested in. See, isn't that way better? Dry it this way. What do I do with my bead maker? That's right here. So E36, first step, is going to be to work on mechanicals. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is mechanicals and cosmetics. So we're going to get all the, stuff, all the OE stuff that needs to be fixed to bring up to make it really, really nice. I don't know if it's going to be museum quality at the end, but it's going to be at least nice. And uh, so that, that's step one. I've already ordered some of the window trim stuff. We're gonna do the AC. We're gonna do, you know, obviously all normal fluid changes and all that. Um, all the while, I'll probably order brakes. So I'm gonna do a, you know, as big of a, I think I can do 355 millimeter Brembo kit, which means I'll have to do 18s. I, I don't know if you can fit that on a 17. I have to check into that because I do want to be able to put lightweight wheels on it. The uh, M lightweight version, I forget what the, what the number, the model number is on that, but lightweight M wheels. And those are 17s. So maybe I do have to do a 323, 323 millimeter brake kit. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to, Wabba will know. We'll do some, some work with that. Probably going to do a custom valved set of Olin's Road and Track suspension. A bunch of Dynan parts, Dynan exhaust, Dynan intake, Dynan software, Dynan um, throttle body. <sighs> yeah, what am I doing? I don't do this yet. Um, uh oh. Is that a big scratch or is that a. Shoot, somebody hit my car with something. Somebody's about to get murdered. There's a 
scratch right there. I don't know if I want to mess that up though. Then uh, BBS LMs. What color brakes do you think I should do? I mean, I hate to do all yellow, but I think yellow and ultraviolet or technoviolet would look good. Obviously black would be standard. Another thing to do would be to color match them, do them in technoviolet. Um, I don't know, what do you think? What do you think we should do? I don't want something that clashes. I don't like brake colors that like, I'm not gonna do red on purple, something stupid like that. Um, why did this get soaking wet? Why did I just wipe? Brakes, exhaust, headers, throttle body, strut tower braces, obviously interior refresh, um, ZCP shift knob, new shift boot, and performance steering wheel, radar detector. What else? I'm sure there's a million other things I'm not thinking about. That's gonna be a fun project. And then once I get that done, hopefully I'll get that actually, get, actually get it done. Obviously paint correction. Um, Then E46. Then who knows what. And then 997. We'll see. I don't plan to do a giveaway car for a while and take a break from that for sure. Although I'd really enjoy that. Because I don't I, I don't do the smart thing and do a you know the giveaway that everybody cares about. I do what I want to do. <laughs> So, but the Civic, the Civic's gonna make some money. Not, uh, not enough money to get me a, a four, five, eight though. I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna have to get that scratch out. I don't really want to, cause then I gotta recode it. So my Dynan exhaust is failing here and here and chipping. It's just, you know, it was on the car before and just not taken care of. By taking care of, all you have to do is clean it. I don't think anybody really ever cleaned it. Notice I'm not putting a huge amount of bead maker on and the car has an ample amount of protection. So, and I've, I tend to lay it on thick the first layer and then the next layers I don't. I don't lay it on as heavy as I'm just maintaining. Gosh, I could do drying aid application all day if I'm doing it like this. So the new house, my Saber cabinet should be here this week so I can get started on that. Like I was saying earlier in the video, the um, I found an electrician that's going to help me out getting everything wired up. I need to put the Tesla charger in and put a bunch of outlets in. And I think I figured out what I'm gonna do with TV. I haven't 100% figured out what I'm gonna do with audio now that I have Dyn Audio. I probably need to figure out a bunch of different, do several different systems so I can model it and create packages for people. Really, it's just an excuse for me to buy more speakers. So you can see how much I use in an application. And I, because I'm cleaning the jams in the wash phase, I feel comfortable using my drying aid towels to clean this part up. I was wondering what that, I thought that was the, the camera making that noise. It's the uh, Ego Charger. I'm gonna 
clean the windows and do a quick little interior cleaning as well while I'm here. Let's do the other, then we'll do the wheels. Then I'll put the car back down and do all the jams or the engine bay and the trunk. Yeah, I'm super excited to have them. All my bottles, beautiful labels, lined up on a stainless shelf. I can see them. Grab and go. It's really exciting. It's the little things that get me. Okay, let's do our wheel. Oops, missed a spot. I haven't been doing this very much lately, but doing a drying aid, wiping down the wheel, catching any extra extra dirt that I may have missed. So these little babies, a little, little 12 by 12 guy is awesome. The microfiber 3.0 is live and active. So the a lot of people on the E36 were just talking about you need to get Euro Euro spec blah 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 blah. So I don't I don't think the US spec SB30 or S32 or S52 is all that bad. So I don't I'm not going to be all that disappointed. I mean I'm not expecting it to be fast anyway. But maybe that long-term collector car becomes some sort of Euro. I just don't want to have like a kilometer only cluster and I don't like that. I know some people dig that, I don't. And then I don't want to have a cluster in the car with the wrong mileage. I almost got suckered on that. There's a, there's a red car, a red 94 Canadian edition car that's for sale for 80 grand. I was thinking about buying a collector and then I found it on Bring a Trailer. The guy isn't advertising this that owns it now, but I found it on Bring a Trailer that that car actually has like 26,000 miles on it, not 2,400. It's just the cluster has 2,400 on it. That's a bunch of bull crap. Okay, I'm gonna do our tire dressing. Now, this is not a new sprayer. This is an old sprayer, I think. Just to be safe, I'm gonna put a new sprayer on. Yeah, that was a, I think that was a 1.1. That was a first iteration sprayer. So yeah, E46, I'd be looking for in a perfect world. And I have a line on one. Actually, I have a line on two of them. Like an 06 Interlagos comp package, slick top, manual transmission, black leather interior. The Unicorn. They didn't make very many of those. But I got a line on one of them. It has a little bit of a story. It would be a driver's, driver's car, whatever that means. So with wheels, I just kind of hose it down and then work to wipe it off. It's gonna be a nice little M3 bonding day. This is old school. Old school Maddie in a new school garage. Back when I had, you know, two cars, one, I took a special time with them. I don't tend to do that as much anymore. I need to do that more often. This is my darn happy place. Set the camera up, talk to you, have a little life chat, a little update, do a modification. So I'm gonna do an exhaust, bust some knuckles, eat too much food, story of my life. It's a freaking great life. I need to get black 
I'm going to order those today. I want black uh, IND painted on these. So I think, you know, I'd really love to do carbon ceramics on this, so I should probably do it. I would have the BMW OE carbon ceramics, the F80 brakes, refinished in this color yellow with no M logo on it is what I would do. So we're going to do the wheels and then we'll address the tires and then I'm going to put the car down, wipe out the jams for the trunk and the wipe down the engine bay. Then I'm going to do a quick interior wipe down and vacuum. So I like to leave the tire dressing on for a while. You can just leave it on and not wipe it off. It's a little shinier when you do that, but it's also a little bit more durable. I find the only thing it doesn't do super well with is like when the car sits out in intense sun like right beating on the tire tends to beat up the the um, tire dressing tends to fail quicker I'm gonna do a new towel so I've got two major hires that I'm working on I'll keep that under wraps for now out of respect for them but two game changers which I'm be a significant investment for me but it's going to take this product development and then I'll take our website to a whole whole different dimension really it's about to me it's all about providing as much value as efficiently as possible without hating it you know I don't want anybody hating it both me and, and employees. If we're having fun, then you're having fun watching it and supporting it. It's a win for everybody. I do like this dining suspension, but I am going to do all ins here at some point. I need to not tear apart the M3 when I'm about to start a whole other project. Let's keep the, the cars that are put together together. I do have the Dundon exhaust up air, or I'm sorry, Dundon headers for the GT4 to put on. I'll put those on here shortly. <coughs> I'm going to use the sole rear section and Dundon headers. I think that's going to be a, a winning combo. We'll see. I got to get a DSC controller for the GT4. <coughs> but that GT4 is going nowhere. I love that thing. So the yarn building is going to have Bryce, Mike, and Mike. We're going to have a camera gear storage and you know categorized and inventoried closet. And we're probably going to put a cage inside of there so it's locked up and bolted to the foundation. Then we're going to have a um, a design area like I want to have all the Swiss tracks all the different tiles available and they're sitting there on display and then several of them on the floor um, I want to have a comet on the wall I want to have a AR on the wall and I want to have those up to date at all times so when there's a new part or piece or something that swaps out or a new model we revamp that I want to have the comet or the Karcher and the new uh, entry-level pressure washer that we're coming out with here. Um, I want to have those, you know, with different portable and wall mount solutions. So I want to have those displayed and so we can touch and use them and reference them when we're providing support on them. Um, the entire garage is going to have Sonic MSS and MSS Plus. I'll have a Sabre at my house. Oh, are my tires? Good. 
Yeah, so I'll have Sabre at my house. We'll have full suite of Sonic tools, full suite of the master collection of the Milwaukee tools. Um, I'm doing a uh, ADT security system. I actually really like the ADT, I'm surprised. I like the ADT system I put in my house. It's actually really nice and pretty darn functional and I don't have to mess with it. I have someone I can call. There's certainly better security systems, but it's darn simple. But we'll put the uh, fancy locks we talked about doing in the past. We'll do some heavy duty locks and things like that. Because the building up north got broken into. They cut the lights off the wall, off the ceiling. <laughs> There's nothing in there to steal. But at some point there will be some cars in there, product in there, all kinds of stuff in there. So I need to make sure that's monitored. Look at how pretty this car is. Keep it clean. Keep all the jams clean and it becomes really easy to maintain. Just a simple wipe down. Just always wipe it down. Um, so yeah, the yarn building is gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited. I'm excited to be able to come here and have my whole compound in one spot and then maybe do bulk storage and a couple of things up north at the other building. Shoot, didn't have the camera pointed towards me. Best part of the whole car, other than maybe the seats. I want a new windshield. I'm going to get a new windshield on this thing. Is the engine bay. It's magic. Beautiful. Look at that thing. Even Shuri Plenum number six. My buddy's over there and UK making awesome stuff. One of my favorite YouTube channels. Go, go check it out. Even Cherry. Or sorry, not Even Cherry. Evolve. Does. Doesn't Evolve. Does, wait. Does Evolve makes Even Cherry? I think. Might be, I might be making that up. They certainly sell Even Cherry. But anyway, Evolve has a really cool YouTube channel. Go check it out. I've been watching it for inspiration on M cars. But I also think, you know, from a selfish business perspective, it would be smart for me to have and maintain an obsessed level collection of the M cars that matter. So that's a wrap. Let's clean the interior real fast. Get a couple of interior tiles, but look at that. Need some EDM drops on that. So maybe do some, do some panning. EDM uh, B-roll. You just go like this. Yeah, man. Look at that. Uh, sick. <laughs> All right. Let's do a quick little vacuuming and wipe down. It is nice to vacuum on a lift too, so you can bring it up to height. Get my computer out of here, do a quick little cleanup. So vacuums are something that I'm gonna be forced to finally chase because I'm gonna want one in my garage and because I'm only selfish, I'll, I'll get it done then.
telling you, if you bought a Cox hose reel from, or a Cox uh, power cord reel, order a pro lock cord. It'll take you, even if you're not very mechanically inclined, you can very easily swap it out. Let's swap it for a pro lock cord. It's awesome. It's a great combo. It snaps in, stays in. This is the flex vacuum. I don't, this is not the one, but it's a vacuum and does a good job. All right, let's knock out the glass here. I haven't put the invisible glass in my fancy bottle yet. Do the, I'm just gonna do the, uh, the front three. The back looks okay. So I always do the glass first. If you're new here, my secret glass training cleaning trick is not a secret, nor is it a trick. It's to make a giant mess, soak it down, and go get it. Use a dry towel, come back, finish the job. And don't put the windows down for a little while until all the interior felt of the doors dries up. That's it. Put this in my pocket so I don't mess it up. Come in here. Yeah. Soak the whole bar interior down. Gives me a little pre-clean. Oh, and a secret weapon. It's the reach and clean tool. This just doesn't have enough ability to absorb. So I do an initial wipe to get the bulk of the liquid moved around and dirt taken care of. And then we come back and finish the job. Get it all the way out in here with the reach and clean. telling you, don't put any weird crap on your windows. Don't put any anti-fog or anything like that. They'll defrost nicely. If you're in a colder climate, you don't have to worry about it. Let's clean the other window and then we'll do a quick interior dressing wipe down. Not interior dressing, interior cleaner wipe down. Wipe the dressing off the tires, and we got ourselves a dialed in M3. Did I mention how much I hate doing interiors? Get a little bit of interior cleaner. This is PS interior cleaner. Spray it on my new 7030 interior towel. Come up in here. And just wipe everything off. Yeah. So it's a nice matte finish. Nothing extra needed. Probably need to do a little Alcantara clean up here. Soon. It's getting a little, little matted down there. Same thing on my shifter. That's it, man. That is it. We got ourselves a clean M3. Last step. The interior. A little spritz of bliss. A couple little shakeroos. One on that side, and one on this side. All right, all right, M3 bros, um, that's a wrap. This little wash and talk, I'm gonna do a separate video where we do the, uh, do the, the exhaust of the car, but uh, thanks for watching this one. 
Thanks to those who, the, thanks to those of you that watched the video. I kind of in jest talked about some of the goofy stuff we've done for the giveaway, uh, and those of you who understood what I was talking about and uh, you know bought some stuff. I really appreciate your support. Uh, it certainly helps. It made us uh, jump, launch on the on the giveaway, so that the you know, car isn't going to lose money. I don't think. Even if it loses a little bit, it was still worth the worth the project to me. It was fun. I created the content. There's some you know revenue generated from new subscribers and new um, you know views and stuff like that on the channel. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching this wash and talk. First one in a long time. First of many uh, more coming. I guess the not the first, but many many more coming. Either here at my house or at the yarn building. All kinds of stuff coming. So. Lots of stuff to share, lots of stuff to improve, and uh, make sure to go check out the Acro Exhaust video, which I'm about to do here in a few minutes. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I'll see you soon.